Hey y'all, Coach in the Fight here. You got Stacy with me. Hello. And in today's class, we're going to be talking about Hanukkah. Mm, okay. Today is December the 29th. Yes. And we know that Hanukkah starts on December the 30th. Right. So a lot of people are getting concerned as to exactly when uh, and what is it that we're supposed to be doing on that day. Yeah. Now we've put out a couple of, you know, longer videos. But in this one, I just kind of want to just run through and kind of tell people what we plan to do for Hanukkah. All right. Just give people idea of the dates and stuff like that and what will be going on. Okay. Now, I ask people to be be real cautious because I'm, we're rushing through this. Right. Yeah, we haven't uh, spent a lot of time on this. You're kind of doing it, like I said, because people se seem to need this right now. Um, we're looking at the calendar that we did last month for December. And just to give us something to look at, I kind of threw together this one here really, really quickly. Mm -hmm. So if those who know how the sacred calendar work, I ask them to, you know, double check these numbers and make sure they're correct. Right. Yeah. So and those who are not familiar with how the sacred calendar work, they can just check the comment section. Somebody would have pointed some error out, you know, and we'll address Respond it. To that, yeah. yeah, we'll fix it down there. But for now, we just kind of want to give people just an idea of what's going on. Okay. Okay. So look, we're looking here at this calendar here, which starts on about December the 26th. Right. Which corresponds to about Keslev 21 in the year 2021. Mm -hmm. That's the sacred month, Kislev or Kislu, right? And Keslu 25, we know, is the first day of Hanukkah. Yeah. And that will be December the 30th. Okay. Hanukkah is an eight-day-long celebration. The eighth day of the feast will be on or about Tevet 3 or about January the 6th. Okay. So, in other words, Hanukkah goes from December the 30th to January the 6th. Okay. Now, that brings the first question, and that's the exact start, because Hanukkah is maybe the only holy day that starts in the daytime. Mm. You know, every other feast day starts in the evening time, mm -hmm. from evening to evening. Well, Hanukkah, strange as it is, is actually just, it starts in the daytime. Okay. So while there are some who will be starting this evening, yes. on December the 29th, we will kind of start in the morning. Okay. You know, we mm -hmm. do, doing more preparing tonight than anything. Hanukkah for us will be in the morning. And since it is a festival similar to Tabernacles, right. in the morning we'll go out and we'll grab some branches and we'll be singing. Okay. But I'm getting a little bit ahead of myself because I want to give people as much detail as possible. So even before we get out of the bed on December the 30th. Tomorrow. Tomorrow. As soon as my eyes pop open, I will say thank you to our Father, our Creator. Not have your coffee first. Absolutely not. <laughs> the first thing, even before we get out of, even before I get out of bed, mm -hmm. that's the first thing I do. The second thing is, you know, start praying, asking Father to um, allow His will throughout the day and to keep me from harm, to keep me out of the hands of evil, to, li to deliver me from evil that day. Those are the most important things. And then from there, I'll go on and I'll start praying for others. Right. Because. Um, praying for others, especially those in need, goes a long way as far as um, our retribution. Mm -hmm. It's kind of equivalent to doing charity for someone. Right? Well, it actually is. It is charity mm -hmm. for someone. So it, it, it goes a long way as far as our salvation is concerned. Yeah. So for those who are brand new to all of this and are planning on keeping Hanukkah correctly, start off first with your prayers. Yeah, I would say that praying, praying for someone, presenting... You know, them before the Father is the best charity that you can do for another person. Yeah. And because this is kind of a temple uh, ceremony, temple dedication ceremony, cleansing of the temple is important. And praying for others is a way of cleansing our bodily temples. Okay. Yeah. So we'll start off that way on December the 30th. And then we'll kind of transition into where we are walking around with these branches and singing these songs, having this joyous tabernacle type celebration through the day, mm -hmm. even throughout the entire week. Mm -hmm. And another thing we may consider doing is actually staying in the booth okay. this whole week. So okay. on December the 30th, uh, may be in a booth. I don't know that it's a biblical requirement, but we do have a booth available for us. It may be the day that, you know, we kick Christian out, <laughs> go back in and sleep in the booth for that entire week of Hanukkah. Uh-huh. 
Yeah, because it is like a like I say the tabernacle celebration. It don't seem like you're too happy with that idea. I was thinking you was talking about the tent, and I was gonna say, why don't we? Since it's not a biblical requirement, I'll let y'all sleep in the booth, and I'll sleep in here. You know, I mean, and and but you know, now that you bring that up, that's that's kind of an aside note. And but let me bring it up. You know, we are rushing toward the time when our wives and our husbands will be considered brothers and sisters. Yes. One of the key elements to getting to that place is the woman's or the wife's participation in these feast days. It's kind of been handicapping you guys as far as your spiritual growth. Mm -hmm. So we're going to have to get past the first era and the second era where you can kind of do what you want. Mm -hmm. And y'all going to actually have to come over and start, you know, keeping these feast days with us. If you want to grow spiritually to the point where, you know, yeah. we, mm -hmm. yeah. So anyway, that's December the 30th. Now, December the 31st will be similar. Okay. It's a, I guess I should say it's a little bit different because Hanukkah is like tabernacles. So the first day of Hanukkah is kind of like a Sabbath day. Okay. Because the first day of tabernacles is a Sabbath day. Mm -hmm. Now, the normal Sabbath day, of course, was back on Monday December the 27th, mm -hmm. which was the 22nd day of Kislu. Mm -hmm. The next Sabbath day will be on January the 3rd, which will be the 29th day of Kislu. Mm -hmm. All of the Sabbath days fall on the 8th, 15th, 22nd, and 29th day of each holy month. But because Hanukkah is like tabernacles, many people will have a sabbatical day. A Sabbath day on December the 30th. So they would essentially have a Sabbath day on Monday, then another one on Thursday, then another one on Monday, and then, of course, New Moon Day on Tuesday, followed by another sabbatical day on January the 6th, Thursday. Be because it is uh, Han the end of Hanukkah, and then, of course, the regularly scheduled sabbatical day will be January the 11th. I count almost six or seven Sabbath days during that two-week process. So, since it's not a regular Sabbath day, does that involve um, no cooking and things like well, that? Or is it just a time of re refreshing and rest? Well, that's my point. You know, as far as me and what I will be doing, I will not be sabotaging or treating December the 3rd as a Sabbath day. I will kind of treat it more like a new moon day. Mm -hmm. where you understand there's some spiritual things going on and I'll try to, you know, be in the word and be praying and to catch a lot of that. But all of the restrictions won't be in place. Like I will be able to cook or make a fire or leave uh, or go sh buy something and something like that. So mm -hmm. it, it, it will be like a Sabbath day, but for me, it won't have all of the restrictions. Right. Right. My regularly scheduled Sabbath day will be on January the 3rd. But on January 26th, again, I will be saying my prayers and singing my songs with my branches and probably even sleeping in my booth. Right. But you have to remember also, and I'm sorry I can't provide all of the scripture here, but we are instructed to read the scripture throughout that week. Mm -hmm. It's kind of like the tabernacles. It's kind of like the Feast of Unleavened Bread, where during the week you kind of expected to get in the word and read the scripture. That's kind of like that Jeremiah fire thing where, you know, they were lighting the menorah, lighting the candle at all, whatever they were doing. Well, the spiritual representation of that now is that we actually read the scripture, mm -hmm. that the law is our oil. And by partaking or absorbing that, those scripture is the way we fill our vessel of oil as we get prepared for this marriage supper. Right. So for what, for the whole week, and I hope everybody's writing this down, is that, you know, we'll be reading the scripture. Every day, mm -hmm. praying, singing, rejoicing, reading the scripture. Okay. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to forget a lot of stuff. Like I said, I'm doing this just on the fly. Um, but one thing I've already forgotten is the blowing of the trumpets. Right. That will be on December the 30th. You can do it every day. But definitely on December the 30th, I'll blow the trumpets. And at the end, on January 6th, I'll blow my shofar. Right. Right. And then, of course, with the sighting of the new moon on January the 3rd, I will be blowing it then, too. Right. Mm -hmm. And of course, that will be a sabbatical day. Right. Mm -hmm. So you got all of these holy days right here, smack dab in the middle of Hanukkah. Mm -hmm. 
Mm-hmm. Right. So whereas on these days, I may be cooking, I may be going off the property and buying stuff during Hanukkah. On these days, January the 3rd and January the 4th, those are regularly scheduled holy days. And those will have the full restrictions of the Sabbath day. Right. Right. And so those will be a little bit different, especially January the 3rd, which is the Sabbath day. Yeah. And then of and then, of course, January the 4th will be New Moon Day. Right. If we see the new moon on January the 3rd. Mm-hmm. And that's important, right? That we all go out on January the 3rd. So we can put that down on our list of things that we'll be doing during Hanukkah. Mm-hmm. Is on the evening, right at sunset, on January the 3rd, we'll all go out to see the moon. Yeah. To verify the beginning of the new month, mm-hmm. which we believe will be January the 4th. Right. Right. And so January the 4th will be like a Sabbath day. Right. Because of what Ezekiel chapter 46 and one says, there's a spiritual renewal and some stuff. So I'll, we'll be sitting down on that day, too. It's the possible new moon day, but you, it's like a Sabbath. Day. It's like a Sabbath day. It doesn't have all of the same restrictions on it. The main restriction of the new moon day is no buying or selling. Right. Yeah. So, you know, there will be some other stuff going on, but there will be no buying and selling on that particular day. Um, because it is the new moon day. And then you have uh, January the 6th will be the eighth day of Hanukkah. That's okay. the last day. Now, on that day will be the very special day. That's the big day. That's the great day. Okay. Right? If you remember the scripture that says that the Messiah was walking around on Solomon's porch during the Feast of Dedication because it was Hanukkah. Yeah, it would have been on the eighth day when he was actually walking around more than likely. Okay. But that reminds me again, I know I'm forgetting stuff, but Tevet 1, whether it falls on Tuesday or Wednesday, depending on the sighting of the moon, is actually the day of remembrance for the first day of winter. Okay. Yeah. Whenever we see this new moon, the next day, the new moon day will be the first day of winter. Mm. That's why it's so hot. Winter hasn't even started yet. Winter starts in January this year. Right. Mm -hmm. So that day in itself is a very big day. Tevet 1, the first day of the 10th month, is a huge, huge day. It's the day of remembrance. You can read that in Jubilees chapter 6 where it tells you the importance of remembering that day. Okay. So we'll have even more special things going on that day. We should be writing this stuff down. I know it's a lot. I'm going to have to go look at the video again myself and write all of this down. (sighs) And then on the eighth day will be the end of the festival, right? Of course, okay. again, we've been singing all week long, rejoicing all week long. You know, we may dig out the old uh, uh, hi-fi. Oh, hi-fi. <laughs> yeah, the stereo, so we can oh, listen okay. to music or something yeah. like that, mm-hmm. you know, just so we can try to make this whole week a joyous occasion, right. similar to Tabernacles. Yes. Yeah. And then that'll be it. It'll be all over with it. Hanukkah will be all over with on the evening of January the 6th. Like I said, we'll do our, you know, much sell. If we're going to have a big dinner, we'll have it on January the 6th. You know, if we're going to have the big dinner party. And again, something I'm reminded of is gifts. Yeah. Some people will be giving gifts on Hanukkah. Mm-hmm. I haven't decided if we're going to give gifts on Hanukkah, mm-hmm. mainly because I don't have any gifts to give. But if I come up with a gift to give on Hanukkah, It'll probably be January the 6th mm-hmm. when when I do. Like I said, this is kind of what I'll be doing. So, you know, if anybody else have any ideas of what they'll be doing, they can, you know, put them down in the comment section. Definitely if I miss something. I know I missed something. Right. So check the comment section as people say, hey, Coach Room forgot about we're supposed to do this yeah. on this day. Yeah. So, but just to give people, you know, idea, because like I said, it seems like, you know, people are starting to get a little concerned, especially when they think about uh, this day over here, Tevet 10. Mm-hmm. We've been talking a lot about that January the 13th. Yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. So we get ready for that particular day. Could be very interesting. Y'all check our channel for the January 13th, 2022 stuff. Um, it may give you more motivation to get this Hanukkah thing right. But I think the main thing here is just to have fun. Okay. It is a joyful occasion. Um, so I believe this is a way for um, the Father's people all the way around the world just be in a joyful mindset all at the same time Mm -hmm. and i think that's what it's really all about yeah so in the comment section y'all tell us what y'all be doing to celebrate hanukkah yeah what are you going to be doing to create joy in your family and in your community and with that we'll say shalom shalom